One of the most complicated things when doing a van build is the electrical. So we're going to show you in this short video our easy electrical system that is not only budget conscious but also gives you all the luxuries. We're going to do that right now. So one of the most important things that we wanted for our electrical system was simplicity. There's all kinds of smart systems you can get for your electrical, but we really wanted a dumb system. So when you need something, you just flip a switch and you're done. So there's no Bluetooth con There's no Bluetooth. Thank you. Bluetooth. <laughs> So there's no wireless connections you have to worry about and we're also kind of somewhat concerned about what that may be doing to our physiology so we wanted to kind of leave all of that out. And there's really not a lot you have to think about except if the van is going to be parked for a long time. So before we get started, I'm planning on breaking up my electrical system into a few different videos because really there's a lot to cover. Um, while our system is very basic, there's a lot of thought that went into planning items like the AC system, the DC system, how those two systems connect, as well as our decision to skip solar, which was a temporary decision that became permanent, as well as a few videos on planning your electrical so it'll make it easier for you when you're installing everything. So ultimately, when designing our system, we wanted to keep it simple. I knew that it wouldn't always be me making everything work, so it needed to be set up for someone who really didn't understand what was going on behind the scenes. Everyone talks about these smart electrical systems, everything from inverters and solar controllers, you can connect to your phone via Bluetooth, and all of that stuff. I wanted what I refer to as a dumb system. I didn't want to have to think about anything. I didn't want to have to be sure about which switch I had to flip when, when I plugged in what, if something was going to be affected. I just wanted everything to work. And it took a little bit of planning, but I think in the end, we got a system that worked really well. So this is our electrical panel. All of the power in our van comes from the batteries to here, and then from here to whatever thing we're using, whatever appliance, whatever. So you would just click what we want and then use it. And it's that simple. We went with breakers instead of a fuse, because if anything goes wrong with a fuse, you have to replace it. However, uh, with a breaker, you can just reset it. So if anything trips our power, on our switch panel, every switch has its own breaker, so you would just push that button to reset it. So that also made our electrical build simple and cheaper because it saved on the cost of a fuse panel as well for the wiring. Instead of having to wire to a fuse panel and then to our electrical panel, it just went straight to the electrical panel. Another way we simplified our electrical was by running everything through the electrical panel which removed any possibility of phantom power draining our batteries. So the total cost of our electrical was $665. Um, a way in which we kept the cost down was by buying used when it made sense to do so. For example, the batteries in our van were all purchased second hand and we got them, we got four of them for $200 and then we ended up selling the two that we weren't using for $200, which netted zero. For whoever purchased the two batteries that we ended up selling, $200 was actually still a really good deal, especially for batteries that were gently used. Um, if you're gonna buy new batteries, you can expect to pay around three to $400 per battery. The fridge in our van was $230, is considered a cool box type system. It's not a compressor style, um, so it's a lot cheaper than a compressor style, but it does draw more energy but we thought the trade-off was fair considering that a compressor style fridge would run you typically around six hundred to twelve hundred dollars depending on what you get the heavy gauge wire used in our van was twenty five dollars again we bought that used it was uh, used booster cables then we just cut that up and used it in the van as needed um, again if we were to purchase that wire new it would have run us around a hundred dollars the switch panel with built-in breakers cost eighty dollars Again, that combo style was a little bit cheaper than getting a switch panel and fuse panel separately. The two USB plugs in our van were $20 combined. We went with a standard size so that they could be easily upgraded in the future if we needed it. The 110 volt AC plug was $45. We could have just plugged everything into the inverter and saved ourselves that extra step, but we did it more just for convenience. So when we need to plug something, we don't have to run all the way to the back, we can do something right here. That plug also comes with two high-powered USB ports. 
our AC junction box was $40. The extension cord we used to plug into shore power is $20. The on-demand pump for our van was $40. So the relay we used that switches between shore power and inverter was $50. So our shore power connector was $25. Again, you can save yourself this step just by running the cord from the inverter out a door or a window, but we just decided to put one on the outside of the van. We just decided to go with the connector. The isolator relay, which basically allows the van when it's running to charge the house batteries, was $20. The wire and zip ties and other little supplies cost us around $40. We bought three breakers for $70 which protect the van batteries and the house batteries in case there's a short. So a question we get quite often is why go simple? Why eliminate all of that stuff when you can have those fancy apps? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is the potential health ramifications that we don't really know yet. That a lot of that science is still quite new. The other big thing is that tech is expensive and whatever you buy today is probably going to be obsolete tomorrow. So we wanted to buy things to put in our van that really didn't have an expiry date. We've been doing electrical and vehicles now for decades and decades. Well, probably almost a century. And in that time, we found a lot of things that really work well. And there's a lot of things that people are experimenting with. We wanted to avoid those experiments. The other problem is, as soon as you buy one expensive piece of technology, well, you need something else to go with that. You want an expensive, fancy solar charge controller? Well, you're probably gonna want lithium batteries. You get lithium batteries, well, then you need an expensive battery to battery charger, or a smart charger, or a VSR relay, or the list goes on. We wanted to keep things very simple. That was part of why we went with an older van with just a simple, basic alternator. So the last thing that we get asked quite often is, why don't you have solar on your van? Well, there's a few reasons. First of all, we have a large rooftop tent. We have to sleep five to six people in this van and it's not very big. So without that roof space for the rooftop tent, we probably wouldn't have a lot of room for our solar panels. We don't want to waste a lot of our roof space, which could be used for carrying things, on solar. Solar is really only effective for about six hours a day on the best day of the year. The other 18 hours, you only get substandard returns from the amount of solar panels you have, and probably 12 of those 18 hours, you get no returns at all. Early on in our build, we decided we were going to start with our alternator and add solar if we needed it. That was two years ago, and we still have never come to a situation where we would have needed to have solar. Solar works really well for people who plan on parking their van and living in their van for long periods of time, maybe four or five days or more. With our current battery setup, which is quite modest, it's only 200 amp hours, we have never ran out of battery power in up to four or five days of parking. We've probably come close, but if you plan on driving on a regular basis, if your van is your daily driver, or if you're going to be traveling in between your hiking spots and not be in your van while you're hiking, then chances are your alternator will be more than enough to keep your batteries charged up. So going back to simplicity being our main goal of our electrical system, I'm going to show you the routine that we use to connect our van to shore power. And it's that easy. Good? One of the most complicated things so we're going to show you in this short video our easy electrical system that is... Just keep going from there, yeah. budget conscious. 